G'day DLive and welcome back to the Gives a Minutes DLive stream for a Wednesday afternoon affair. It has just gone one minute past three in the PM for me. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, good evening to you. Whatever the time it is, wherever you're consuming this content, you're always welcome right here on the Gives a Minutes DLive stream. Looking into the chit chat, I see Charles. I see Kangaroo Beats, I see Julianne, I see Redox Bear, I see H-Man, and I see Brewski Bear, and I appreciate Brewski Bear breaking the silence. I see six cheeses, and therefore six, I see six crew, and therefore six cheeses, because everyone gets a cheers when they join the Gives a Minutes D live stream chit chat. Here comes a glass of water, and over there is a microphonic microphone device. These two things touch each other somehow, somewhere, in some intergalactic stratosphere. That represents the cheers. I've got no idea why that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, six freaking cheers. Almost went for a seventh one there. Can I get a swig of this? Thank you. Just got back from a 9K fitness walk. Got rained on, but I'm very excited to come out here and stream cryptocurrency every Wednesday, folks. This entire stream for the next three freaking hours, all cryptocurrency. If you're watching for the first time and you just saw me sitting there dead still, and you're thinking, what the hell is this guy up to? Well, my idea is somebody else can begin the conversate. I'm going to sit here for three hours rambling and ranting and raving at the very least someone of you yahoos can start the conversation and in this case it was brewski bear thank you brewski bear i wonder how long that would go i do that every stream but i hate it when it goes long on a crypto stream because these streams are always packed full and we need as much freaking time as we can freaking well freaking possibly get how many freaking times can i say freaking that many in the chat so charles said good night gives and givers that's obviously the last well, the end of last stream good night charles kangaroo beats says okay thanks buddy thank you kangaroo beats cheers julianne says much love and a little love how there thank you julianne redox bear much love good night folks thank you redox bear h man says good night all smiling face brewski bear says that was stella cheers 07 oh, 07 oh, 07 oh, Okay, 07. First things first, if you're watching this and you're not on DLive, perhaps you're watching on the YouTube machine, perhaps you're watching on the Facebook meta machine, perhaps you're watching on the Twitch machine ski, maybe the uh, Trovosity, wherever you're watching, if you want to partake in the content and if you've got some comments, Please come down here to dlive.tv slash gives a minute. Take that, take that bit out. Just go dlive.tv slash gives a minute. Thing is, you may be watching over there and I'm going to let this run, right? I'm going to let this out there. But if you're commenting over there, I'm not seeing that, right? I'm not seeing that at all. I'm only seeing the one chat. It's this dlive chat. So if you want to chat, if you've got comments, you want to you want to correct me. You want to make certain we're doing it right here because crypto can be a little uh, daunting at times. Maybe I'll get things wrong. I get things wrong all the other times in my life. Why is crypto any different? You might want to come down here to dlife.tv. That's what I'm saying. If you're ferociously in the YouTube chat going, well, what the hell is this guy not even seeing? I'm apologizing in advance. Come on down, dlive. You know the deal. That being said, who did that? Brewski wow. Bear. Mayunis. Wow. Thank you, Brewski Bear. Cheers, my friend. And I have another swig of this. So that being said, all those finalities out of the way. Uh, first of all, Bitcoin, all-time high yesterday. Let's have a look at that, folks. Let's go over to the Brave browser here. This is the browser that pays you in crypto to use it. I'm going to stop for a second and... Hammer this fast and hard to you. If you're not using Brave Browser and you're not in crypto and you're thinking, I always hear about this cryptocurrency crap. How can I easily get in? How can I get in without... How can I get in without digging into my wallet and get some crypto? Keep that away. Start using the Brave Browser. This one here. It, pay, it literally pays you 
in basic attention token. That's their crypto, BAT. It literally pays you to use it. Now you gotta, I know you're gonna say, okay, so how many ads have I gotta watch? What have I gotta do? How have I gotta be involved? Nothing. Just use it as you do any other browser and get paid. Yes, there is a little ad that pops up every now and then on the side, like a little notification. It's not even on the app, it's not even on the bra- on the browser. It's just a little notification, like an, an, I- an iOS or an OS, and if you're using PC, just a little on-screen notification. You can just flick it off, bum, done. And you get paid monthly. I've been using it for about, I don't know, about nine months now, maybe, maybe, well, I've been in crypto since November. Yeah, probably about nine months. And um, I've earned, I mean, we could go and have a look at my Uphold wallet, I suppose, but I've earned, from what I understand, about $90. And that's obviously fluctuating as BAT ups and downs, right? So here's the thing, 90 bucks, 10 bucks a month, it's not very much, right? But the thing is, you're gonna have to use a browser anyway. Do you wanna get 10 bucks a month or not? And I'm not endorsed by Brave at all. Hey, Braveski, I love you. No endorsement though. I just, if I see things that are gonna benefit, I'll just let you know, right? I'll just bring it out and lay it out. Also, (laughs) addendum, have a good look at me, look closely. Observe, let me ask you one question. Do I look like a financial advisor? No, not at all. So don't take anything I say here as financial advice. We've got to be super careful about that. YouTube, I salute the tubes of you. I don't want to get in trouble here. I'm advising you, not financially advising you. Take this as entertainment. That's it. Let's not get our... Let's not get messages mixed here and let's not get liabilities all concerned and crossed, right? Let's be clear about it. I'm not a financial advisor. Take this as you will. Entertainment, educational, fun, relaxing, just not financial advice. Cross that one off your list and we'll all have a good time. So the basic attention uh, token is what you earn for using the Brave browser. I've just been paid already this month, so my... um, value here is low at 76 cents either way oh, i just got an ad here oh, you can't see this but i just got a base i just got a brave browser ad and i'm just going to swipe it done get paid for that no worries so what we're going to do we, well we're going to look at the bitcoin price let's go to coin gecko we're going to see an all-time freaking high here folks let's go to the bitcoin machine and let's take a look ski at the all time high. It's trading right now at 66.5, which isn't an all time high, but if you scroll down skis, the all time high was 24 hours ago when it peaked out at 68641. $68,641 dollar dues. Uh, well, that's not dollar dues, that's American dollars. That's a lot though, right? That's a, that's a, that's a good, that's a good all-time high. And Redox Bear has been calling this. Redox Bear, I don't know if you're watching, but he's been calling. He called, I can tell you what he called. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, one second, one second, one second. Redox Bear called. I'm just not going to make this public because it's a... Uh, Redox Bear says, I predict Bitcoin will hit 90K by the end of November. So we're 10 days into the month now. By the end of this month, Redox Bear, g'day Redox if you're in the chat, 90K. And then I said, and then 100K by year end. And he said, 100K at least, I'm thinking it peaks above 135K. Again, not advice financially, just advice or entertainment. As you will, as you were. So let's take a look at some other crypto that we are interested here on the Gives a Minute stream. It's called Hex. Hex has been rocketing downward. And we want to see if that's still the case. A lot of um, Hex streamers don't speak. Well, hold on a second. No, hang on, let me, 18 cents. Right, before we get too deep into that, just want to say the the idea of this next little 
blurb from my mouth is an attempt to be as level as possible. Brewski Bear, good value. How you doing, man? Good value? You've already... Well, I, I feel like... I feel like we're just talking. I feel like it's just you and me here, which is fine. It, it, two viewers? Okay, that's not wrong either. Damn, DLive is dying, isn't it? Two viewers in the cryptocurrency category? That's that's not... Anyway, I'm going to deliver this as if there's 200 viewers. Um, so here's the thing. When a lot of Hex streamers... Um, you've always heard this up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right. Uh, Hex is the only chart that's good. Hex, blah, blah, blah. Well, when Hex is bad... When Hex is down, like it is now, isn't it isn't it time we also acknowledge that and say, oh yeah? Because if you think about like slamming other cryptos and like putting other coins down and saying this coin's lousy and this is just a meme coin and this is rubbish, this is rubbish. Well, when your coin starts plummeting, how do you justify that? Because the plummet and the down is what you're digging at other coins for. Yet when Hex falls, oh no, that's okay. Don't worry, it's an opportunity to buy. Isn't that the same across the board with every crypto though? But we see this, um, it's like this club where you have to always say good things about your coin. I'm like, if I if if I saw that, let's, let's, where's the chart? So that's the, that's the 24 hour chart. Let's go 14 day chart, go 30 day chart. If I saw that, I'd be like, dude, that's, uh, What's going on with Hex, right? The Hex is dropping value. And that's the same thing people say when they look at other coins. But yet you can't say it with Hex. Good fella. Thanks for following the Gives a Minute D live stream. Now this makes you the latest giver right here on the channel. Now why would this make you a giver? Well, let me explain. You see, you're giving me your time to consume the content. Whereas me, I'm a giver because I'm giving you my time to create the content. And so you see how we're both givers here and this is a two-way street. But you're the latest giver on the Gives a Minute D live stream. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Brewski Bear has got a link to a Richard Hart Twitter status. Let me have a look at that. Uh, and I see Melbourne Doug in the house. Hey Gives might lurk for a bit and listen. Thanks dude. Thanks Doug. I hope you're still shunting for today. Brewski Bear. Now Hex has the option to stake or earn interest. So you can earn during a bear market. So. I was going to say, there's, there is a fundamental difference with the Hex token or the Hex crypto, right? Of course, it's a, it's the Id You shouldn't even have a chart, right? Hex shouldn't even have a chart because in effect, and this is what I kind of don't get about it, it's longer pays better, stake and forget, walk away from it, yet why are there so many hex streamers always talking about it always every day a hex stream hex 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 if the idea is to get your bag stake it and come back in 15 years there shouldn't be anybody talking about it it should just be yeah i got my stake done i'll catch you when it when it retires when it evaluates right when it pops off i'll catch you then instead there's daily analysts analysis analysts there's da there's daily anals Every day there's something with Hex and it's like, I thought this was like just a thing that you forget about. Like, I don't want to look at the chart. I don't want to look at the, the who, who are the big wallets dropping and who are the big wallets getting out. I don't care. I got in. I'm done. I'm a Hexican, right? For 15 years, I'm here. So forget about all that crap. But if you're going to talk about other coins negatively because they're going down, then you should have the same seesaw should equate to when you talk about your own coin. Hex is going down, right? Man, I got something tickling my nasal passage. How's it going, good fella? I've always been a dropping by on the YouTube streams. This is my first stream catching you on DLive. Hey, good fella, did I did I bring you across from the DLive machine? Dude, my nose is so itchy. Hold on. Oh, my camera just went off. No. What happened to my camera? I don't understand what happened then. I don't I, I don't understand what happened. Man, my nose is so itchy right now. I don't know what it is. Like something in there just going. But Bruce, uh, good fellow, how's it going? I've always been dropping in on the YouTube streams. This is my first stream catching you on. D did I bring you across? Did I, did I pull you over to D Live? Yes, that's that's one, that's one I've brought over from from YouTube. Thank you for being here, dude. Um, 
The point is, now you can chat, right? Now we can converse. If you, you can still watch it on the tubes of you, but if you wanna and give me some advice, I don't pretend to know everything. I need learning as well. That's why we do it live. So you're here to help out now. So, and I've got a drink from this. That's the rule, green tea. I love it, it's beautiful. No, I don't, I hate it, it's disgusting. I'm drinking from it. Melbourne, Doug, shunting today, tomorrow, on Friday. It's been pouring rain in Melbourne. Dude, it's been hammering down here as well. Uh, Brewski, Brewski Bear, always have some liquid. There's a lot of minutia that can help perform better, but you don't have to know all there is to hex, about Hex to use it. Did someone say Umbrella Network? Redox Bear, here he is, man. Redox Bear, we were talking about your predictions, dude. We just had a look at the Bitcoin chart. Uh, can I reiterate what you've expressed in the Discord privately to me? What? That, hang on, was that private? Ah. Uh, that was in my that was public in my i can i don't, I don't need permission because he put it publicly redox bear said and i've already said it before too by the way but uh, now that you're here i feel a little guilty for not asking you but it is public uh redox says i predict bitcoin will hit 90k by the end of november so we're 10 days into november now we've got a little ways to go and then i said and then 100k by year end question mark redox bear says 100k at least I'm thinking it peaks above 135. Woo wee! Hallelujah to that if that happens. Redox Bear, so far you've been pretty, pretty accurate. Can you keep that accuracy? Because I wouldn't mind that 135k Bitcoin. You did. I pulled you over, good fella. Well, it's good to see you, man. It's good to know that there are some crew that listen on the YouTube because I do appreciate that YouTube, you know, and DLive is a strange one to get used to. It's a strange one. It's uh, not the best time to come here. I gotta be honest, right? I gotta be honest. There's not the not the greatest time to be on DLive, but I appreciate you being here. So Umbrella Network, we are gonna be looking into the Umbrella Network as a thing on this stream. I, I'm sorry about this. If I'm looking kind of strange here, I'm not at my normal setup. Well, I am, but my normal setup's missing a few core ingredients. And right now when I look to my monitor, like. I normally have multiple monitors. When I look to the only one I've got right now, I can't see it because my boom mic stand is like, and I've got to like duck around and get past it. It's just this, it's just the way it is. It's only going to be for a little while. And I guess till mid November when, uh, mid December, when we get the uh, new MacBook Pro M1 Max. That's another story though. Um, but yeah, so we've got a, we got a few things here tabbed, uh, tab skis. We've got a few little stories. Uh, this first story we're going to look at is this Commonwealth Bank of Australia to trade cryptocurrency bar. Look at that. We're also going to have a look at this Green Moon Zilla coin. Green Moon Zilla. Now, let me read you something that CompTech put in my Discord. He said, actually, this is, this is a DM, so I don't know if I should read this, but I mean, it's pretty. Oh, no, he said I can. He said I can. He said, quote, I found a crypto that as the price went up, the number of tokens you hold decreases. So you have the same dollar value no matter what the value of the token. Who did that? Who did that? Arabus, hey Arabus, thanks for following. I'll get back to that in a second. Thanks for following the Gives a Minute D Live stream. Now this makes you the latest giver right here on the channel. And now why would this make you a giver? Allow me to explain. You see, you're giving me your time to consume the content, whereas me, I'm a giver because I'm giving you my time to create the content. And so you see how we're both givers here, and this is a two-way street, but you're the latest giver on the Gives a Minute D live stream. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Daleski in the house too. Hey, Daleski, how you doing, man? Ski, good to see you, Ski. Daleski says, remember I said that Bitcoin will likely go above 100K soon. I said that the day Bitcoin ETF began, you did. I mean, you did say that. The uh, the um, pro pro choice, pro coin, pro, pro rate, pro rata, pro the EFT, the one by pro someone, yeah. Uh, just a spoiler alert, it hasn't done 100k yet, Dalesky, so don't get too cocky over there. Cocky as in uh, confidence. It hasn't hit 100k yet. I mean, it's been up and down, all-time highs about 12 hours ago. Isn't that basically a stable coin? Let me read that again. I, I mean, it's, that's what it sounds like to me. I found a crypto that as the price went 
up. Now that's not a stable coin. As the price increases, the number of tokens you hold decreases. So you have the same dollar value no matter what the value of the token. I'm not the smartest. I never pretended to be, but... Buh? That doesn't make any sense. I found a crypto that as the price goes up, the number you hold decreases. So you have the same dollar value no matter what the value of the token. What's the what's the incentive there? I can't think of the incentive to even like what so So I want to have a hundred coffee mug tokens. No. This coffee mug's worth X dollars because it's tied to this coin. Half of the coffee mug disappears when the coin goes in lower in value to make it still worth... I don't know. It's called Green Moon Zilla. Let's take a little look ski at it. Green Moon... We won't spend too much time on this because it sounds pretty strange, right? Green Moonzilla crypto scam. Beware, rug pool imminent. You must watch Green Mill. Okay, well, let's have a look at their website first. And let's try not to get swide swindled by it. Uh, isn't that uh, to screw you around? Economic theories are being tested. It's a science. Keep calm and own Green Moonzilla. It will keep rising. Let's put you Yahoo's oh, over here. What? So they're using, that's not their intellectual property, is it? That's that's Godzilla. Uh, why choose Grimzilla? I just see Grimsky. Why choose Grimsky? Grimsky is supported by the CTO of Grim. It is satisfied with the demand for stable price increase. Who wrote this, a three-year-old? Grimzilla is supported by the CTO of Grim. It is satisfied with the demand for stable price increase in the case of chart fluctuations because we initially added an hourly deflation mechanism for tokens in the code. That's all one sentence, comma. <laughs> Allowing you to obtain stable income while owning Grimzilla ah! with an exclamation. At the same time, we have added smart inflation function in our code, which will increase the number of your tokens in the right time. We've done some complicated math to keep our prices at the right level. What a load of. We're family friendly. What a load of poop poop. This is rubbish, right? <laughs> I don't even want to look at it. What? It's written by a four year old. It's trying to sw it's, the idea of this is to try to swindle you, right? Like to confuse you. Oh, it's got the it's got the, all the correct words in there. It's got deflationary mechanisms. It's got chart fluctuations. It's got complicated math. Oh, they must know what they're doing. Take my money. Take it, Grimzilla. Off you go. <laughs> no. I mean, my advice would be, if it wasn't financial, just general advice would be, do not touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. I wouldn't touch it with a plastic one. Let's grab a look at the uh, videos here, folks. There's two. There's one. We'll take a look at this one first. Grimzilla skis. I know those big words too, Red Ox Bear. It's bullshit. Yeah, it sounds like a brewski. Hello guys, this is Scam Hunter. Okay, for your request to find another scam token, this scum? is Green Monzilla. You scum have token. to stay away from this token. People are saying this is scam, people are buying it, some of them they cannot hold it. Did I say correctly? 
thirteen thousand people have already got this as in a, got an address. Look at that, thirteen thousand eight hundred eighty eight people already have fallen prey to this shit. Redox Bear, it's quite fun playing around with BSC shit coins. I mean, yeah, but I mean, playing is one thing, but putting coin down, I don't know. Do you want to put real money down? Saying this is scam, people are buying it. Some of them they cannot hold it. You can see all the time you have to check comments. Uh, it says scam from one. Uh, Probably sheep hold up and uh, what they say another one they cannot sell it so hang so, on tell us why it's a scam dude this squid game is honey poor all the scum contractors all scum see one of them this is scum as well see what token count keeps dropping into a wallet seems scammy the project is a scam lost a lot of tokens all grimzilla and uh, tokens my account Mozilla doesn't decrease, so people are asking. It's keep going up and. Why is my amount of green Moonzilla decreasing? Wouldn't that be theft? <laughs> That's what that comment says. Yes. Then they call a pump and dump, so people they cannot sell it. This is scam. They lost the money, so be careful, guys. Even though people are saying. This is scam. People are keep buying in it, buying it, buying it. So, what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to wallet address, contract address, and we're gonna write it down. This is scam. Even see people they already writing down here, but people are not checking. They keep buying it. So what? It, is that all you got, buddy? What we're gonna say? Is he gonna make a comment? Is that all he's gonna do? I want to see uh, Green Moon Zilla. See if anyone else has some more interesting commentary on this. There's these guys pumping it. Green Moon Zilla. Token Green Moon Zilla review. Scam or legit 11 days ago. 16 hours ago. Scam. Full details. Let's take a look at uh, Alpha Crypto. Oof. Oi, yeah, 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 way too loud, Alpha Crypto Wolf. Crikey. You want to make us all go deaf? Hi, guys, welcome back to the Alpha Crypto Wolf channel. Right, talk about cryptocurrency, crypto news, um, shit coins, solid projects, coins that are pumping, and everything in the crypto space. If you are yet to subscribe to our channel, you are missing out. We are currently 1,950 subscribers. We are a community on this channel because we interact here and we leave. Is he showing us his YouTube dashboard? Reply than mine. You know, give information and updates to ourselves. If you are yet to subscribe, just kindly hit the subscribe button, turn on our bell post notification on so that when I drop interesting videos like this, you'll be among the first to see it. Like I always do, I go on coin market cap, I check for coins that are all right, all right, get into it, buddy. Check if it is worth investing in and if it's something we should avoid completely. So, any information I give is solely going to be my opinion about this cryptocurrency. This is not a financial advice. Make sure you do your own research because trading cryptocurrencies, investing in cryptocurrency is very risky and I will not be held responsible for any loss whatsoever. Every decision you make is solely yours. All I'm doing is just to give you my own opinion about this project. So, without dude, 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 you're one minute into an eight minute video and you haven't done anything yet. Come on, buddy. Waste much of time. Let me just review this Green Moon Zilla that is pumping over 1025 percent on the coin market cap. Now, Green Moon Zilla is currently ranked 3357 on coin market cap. And it has a watch list of over 2,873. That means 2, 000, over 2,873 people are watching this token. They are monitoring the token. And the token is going very well. It's doing well. It has half a million trading volume last 24 hours with over $580 million trading volume. A fully diluted market cap of over $70 million. Um, and there's no market capitalization at the point of recording this video. So no, I can't deal with that video. I can't deal with it. Sorry about that, folks. He, it's just too difficult to hear him, too difficult to understand him. Scam reporter. Let's take a look at this. God, 
seriously. Hello friends and welcome to oh. my Today I'm going to talk about Green Monzilla. Can we find a decent YouTuber with this? Coin Edu. Hi everyone, welcome to Coin Edu channel. In this video, I'm going to... Left channel audio only? What? This is the third video we've taken on this subject and so far three lousy YouTube crap. This is... The audio is only in one channel. Talk about Green Moon. Nah. Be all right too, buddy. I mean, do I have high standards or is it, are these just all rubbish? Two weeks ago, Amma Khan. What's up, guys? Your boy Umar Khan. Today, we'll be talking about a project, Green Moon. The first. It's a page it scam? Page it? I'm not sure what that word means, page it. But this, this video looks at least a little more palatable. I heard this was one of my buddies actually bought this one I want to say a week or two back and his small investment of like 200 bucks was worth I think he's at 100 or 200 grand which is insane that's probably the biggest uh, not counting NFT it's probably the biggest success story I've personally seen again we're very late to this one but we this is not even the same coin this is green moon it's not green moon zilla oh my god you seriously clickbaited this to click that dude look look this is the, this is, who did we just check? No, sorry, my bad, my bad. That's Green Boon. Green Moon Zilla. Hello guys, this is Scam Hunter. Okay, for your request. Nah, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Okay, so, so. <laughs> I, I, my advice, not financial. My advice would be avoid that thing. Let me just read. Let me just read what Comtech said about it again. Comtech said, just to put a finalize this right. We don't. We're not going to look at these lousy videos. But listen, he found a crypto that, as the price went up, the number of tokens you have decreases. So you have the same dollar value no matter what the value of the token. If that doesn't tell you enough to not touch it, I don't know what else will, right? Do not touch that thing with a, with a freaking pop. What is wrong with my hair? What's a page it scam? What's what's a page it scam, Redox Bear? I don't know what that word is, man. Page it scam. Ah. I need a stylist or a haircut, just one or the other, right? Probably a haircut, I'm gonna get one soon. Let's move on and let's take a look at this, folks. Some news articles here. Kleiman v. Wright, Bitcoin's trial of the century kicks off in Miami. This is put in the Discord as well. Miami, the civil trial of Ira Kleiman versus Craig Wright kicked off in Miami on Monday that may provide insight into some of Wright's claims that he is Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin? Interesting. Wright, an Australian computer scientist? You're telling me Satoshi Nakamoto is potentially Aussie? That's the first I've ever heard that. Uh, an Aussie computer scientist and early cryptocurrency pioneer has been claiming to be the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin since 2016. Okay, so this is well known. I'd, I've only been in crypto since 2019. No, not even, since 2020. Uh, this, suite, this suit po posits, 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 this, su this suit, that word, that Wright did not act alone. According to Ira Kleiman, his late brother David, a fellow computer expert and longtime friend of Wright, was the co-creator of Bitcoin and is entitled to a share of a trove of Bitcoin currently valued at 66 bill. I mean, here's the thing, right? If Shitoshi Nakamoto is missing in action, presumably dead, Anybody can lay claim to it, right? Unless he steps up and goes, just kidding, I'm still alive. This is me. Here's my birth certificate, blah, blah, blah. If he's dead, anybody can claim this. 
Hello, what are you doing on the side there? Just a little push-up, eh? Lulu Mon, go for the push-up there. That's a little distracting. She's got workout gear on. Let's try to let's try to uh, not notice the butt cheeks on the side and continue reading. The suit alleges that David Kleiman and Wright formed a partnership and established an entity called WNK Info Defense Research LLC. An LLC is not Australian though, so they did that in, in the states. No, she's gone. Enough exercise. Okay. Uh, that used to mine Bitcoin and organize their intellectual property including the Bitcoin source code. Okay. According to emails shown to the jury on Monday, Ira Kleiman alleges that his brother was solely responsible for mining the entire stash of Bitcoin in question and has accused Wright of swindling them through a combination of forgery and deceit from David's estate after his death. Okay. I'm a little distracted by the pole vaulter here on the side. Okay. Uh, Wright denies the allegations and says that while Kleiman was a friend and a confidant, the two were never partners and that he alone is Satoshi Nakamoto. A panel of 10 jurors selected Monday will have three weeks to hear the evidence and decide the fate of what Wright's team is calling Satoshi's Bitcoins. Now, when did this go to air? November 2. So this is still quite current. So this is, this process would be happening right now. Partnership paper trail. In his opening statement on Monday, Kyle Roche, an attorney for the Kleiman estate, established a timeline for the jury that aimed to demonstrate Wright's conflicting statements about the nature of his relationship with David Kleiman. In those emails shown to the court, Wright repeatedly referred to David Kleiman as his partner and his business partner. That's pretty solid until after the latter's death in April 2013. So they're in emails. Okay, you can't really fake that. I mean, they've got meta headers and stuff, haven't they? Uh, story continues. Rush told the jury, is this going to be a bunch of paywall? I don't know. Uh, Rush, why, why click that if it's just, just Yahoo? Anyway, Rush told the jury that after David Kleiman's death, well, they're having a good time over there, aren't they? These ads are distracting. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna Netflix and or chill. Uh, Rush told the jury that after David Kleiman's death, Wright's story began to change. He continued to call David his partner, but started to distance himself, and claimed that David had transferred their share intellectual. Their shared intellectual, there's a new word for you, their shared intellectual, their shared intellect, intellectual property into Wright's possession. Oh, we've just gone downhill on these ads, folks. We've gone from sexy times to purple Crocs. She, I mean, you, you just, you've lost me. I was looking at those ads and now I'm looking at purple Crocs. According to Roche, Wright's relationship with Kleiman's surviving family members began to sour sometime in 2015 when Ira was informed by Aussie tax authorities that he fraudulently claimed to pay David Kleiman approximately 40 mil for materials belonging to their shared company, W&K Info Defense Research LLC. This is what I don't get. If this, if these guys are Australian, you don't have an LLC in Australia. This is an American an American company, right? LLC. Limited liability, right? We call that a PTYLTD. Same concept, but just not, not called an LLC. Uh, Roche told the jury that after 2018, when Ira Kleiman filed suit against him, Craig Wright began to deny that he and David Kleiman had ever been partnered or that he'd ever had a partner at all, aside from his wife, Ramona Watts. What? In deposition footage dated April 4, 2019, Wright said, he was never my partner. I hate the whole concept of a partnership, but where were those emails? In the email shown to the court, he referred to his partner as his partner up until 2013. Inside the defense, Wright's defense seems to largely hinge on two factors. His diagnosis with autism, of course. I only called you my partner because I was autistic. Is that where, is that where this is going? If so, that's a, that's a lousy twist. 
uh, and a lack of a written agreement. Okay, so that's big. No written agreement. In her opening statement, Amanda McGovern... <laughs> You can't write this shit out, right? Her, she's in the court. She's calling... Her last name is McGovern. That's like an ice cream guy called Cone. In her opening statement, Amanda McGovern, counsel for Wright, claimed that Wright's autism made him difficult to communicate with, overly literal and combative. Rather than pushing back against the veracity of the plaintiff's timeline... McGovern instead attempted to convince the jury that Wright and Ira Kleiman simply have a different understanding of the word partner. Well, you know, legally that doesn't make a difference. Partner means partner. McGovern painted a picture of Wright's lifeline of social difficulties claiming that he came from a very difficult home, had very few friends in his childhood, and he was considered strange even by his sister. At 13, he wore a ninja outfit to a playground and all the other kids called him a freak. Ain't nothing wrong with that. For Wright, math and cryptography became a refuge away from bullying at home and at school. According to Roche, however, Wright's diagnosis with autism is a recent development. Hello, teeth. There's some nice little teethy pegs there. He was diagnosed sometime after 2018. So he wasn't even autistic. Come on, dude, that's a cop-out. Uh, by Dr. Armin Klein, director of Marcus Center for Autism and an expert witness for the defense, Roche Toyd told the jury that Wright was diagnosed over the phone by Kilm, who had at the time of his diagnosis never met him in person. So we're getting diagnosed as autistic over the telephone? Okay. Will the real Satoshi please stand up? Please stand up. While both the plaintiffs and the defense posit that Craig Wright, either alone or alongside David Kleiman, invented Bitcoin, reality is murkier. Despite Wright's claims, as well as the history of lawsuits against his detractors, he has not able he has not been able to he has not been able to definitively prove that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. That's a nice dress there. Where'd you get that? Blue Bungalow. After announcing in May 2016 that he would move Satoshi's Bitcoin, proving that he had access to Satoshi's private keys, and he was therefore Satoshi, Wright failed to do so. Writing, I do not have the courage. I cannot. What in a now... So hold on a second. So, so Satoshi Nakamoto has a wealth of Bitcoin. Hello, you lovely pole vaulter. I wouldn't mind going pole vaulting if you're going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Are these ads or is this... That's like... Anyway, anyway. Very distracting side roll ads. Um, so he has a whole bunch of Bitcoin, right? He's presumed dead. This Yahoo claiming he is him... And here's proof. If I if I am Satoshi, I will have access to those wallets and I can She's going for push-ups again. I've got to get off there for a second, folks. Get off that website, not get off on there. You know what I mean. If he is Satoshi, if this right character is Satoshi, right? Right? He has access to the the seed phrase to get into those wallets that are suspected of being owned by Satoshi. Yet he didn't. The only thing that would prove that's him, he said he didn't have the courage to do it. We've heard courage used um, in the past, most notably by Apple, uh, to remove the headphone jack. You've got to have courage. It's not a very good example of courage, and neither is that one, Mr. Wright. If you've got the seed phrases, use them and prove it, buddy. The cryptographic proof he provided instead has been accused of several high profile cryptography experts as being fraudulent. Past accusations of document forgery and other fraud repeatedly came up during the first day of trial as the plaintiff's attorney showed the jury examples of doctored emails. What? He's trying to make things right. Where they allege that Wright added and deleted sentences from David Kleiman, changed dates and more. Shoot. Follow the money. 
If the jury finds in favor of the plaintiffs and Ira Kleiman is awarded the brother's share of Satoshi's bitcoins, the question remains whether the court has any way of retrieving them. That's very, very true, right? Just because they say, oh, hello, MacPack. Just because they say, uh, yes, uh, we're going to have to uh, authorize the transfer of the uh, possession here. Wow. I was like, wow, who did that? Red Ox Bear, thank you, man. By the way, dude, I asked you before, what's a what's a page it scam? I don't understand that word. Page it, page it. Yeah. Uh, so even if he did, even if this was mandated through the court of law, if he hasn't got the seed phrases, you're 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 screwed, right? The still unsolved mystery of Satoshi Nakamoto. Sorry, I got distracted by sexy girls on the sidebar. Uh, what are they advertising? Doesn't matter. Good looking girl gets your attention. Doesn't matter what they're advertising. At that point, they could be advertising the floorboards. I didn't even see them. Davo, why gives and everyone in the chat? How you doing, man? How you doing, Davo? Uh, it's a scam brewed up in the slums of Mumbai, India. Ah, oh, Paget is a town. Right, Paget. Okay, okay. I got distracted by cute girls on the sidebar. The still unsolved mystery of Satoshi Nakamoto's identity and Wright's seemingly inability to re retrieve the coins in his wallet means that recovering the coins may not be possible. Bing! If Wright is not Satoshi, or if he is and has somehow lost access to the wallet, it is unclear how Ira Kleiman will get his hands on half the stash. Exactly. <laughs> you can't just guess the seed phrase. Furthermore, there are some of there are some in the crypto community who question whether the 1.1 mil bitcoins at the heart of the case even exist. In a blog post from 2018, Tokyo-based software developer and self-proclaimed Bitcoin archaeologist Kim Nielsen traced wallet addresses supposedly held by Wright, tying many of them back to the 2014 Mt. Gox hack. She's in a bikini. Interesting. And there's an advertisement. And that's how the story ends. Just like that. Okay. Conclusion? Inconclusive. Very interesting though, right? You, you can't deny that's in that's in that's in interesting. Here's the thing though. Either Satoshi Nakamoto's dead, or he's not dead, and he's gonna reveal himself at some point. But until that day, you're always gonna have Yahoo's like this right character pop up. Right? They're always going to pop up. There's there's a lot of money at stake. If he is who he says he is, man up, ball up, and open the wallet. Oh, God, I don't have the courage to do that. He doesn't have the keys. It's not him. I'm great, thanks. How's things going with you? I'm good too, Davo. I'm good, man. Redox Bear, there are over a million Bitcoins that are lost. Yeah, yeah, and... Yeah, and, he, and if he claims, if if this character from Australia, that place doesn't even exist to begin with. What's he talking about, Australia? What a scam. If he is Satoshi Boy, he'll have access to those wallets. That would be the simplest way to completely end this and just go, yep, there it is, folks, done. You know what he's doing? He's brute force, he's brute force trying to guess them, hey. He's got a... He's got protocol and, and software working to try to brute force guess the, the seed phrases. And then he'll be like, told ya. It's not him. It's not him. But we do have another story here from the news. And this one is intriguing. Commonwealth Bank to trade cryptocurrency in Australia. Of course, Australia doesn't exist, so that's going to be difficult. One of Australia's big four banks has announced a game-changing move that will change the way Aussies bank forever, if they existed. We all know Australia is a scam, doesn't exist. The earth is flat. Now this is deceptive. If you're on this website, folks, be aware. This is news.com.au. Do not click this story thinking you're gonna watch a video based on the story you're reading. No, they shove these little thumbnails of unrelated content that you can click. You know why? So you click it and they get the view. Do not click that crap. Commonwealth Bank, let me make that larger so we can see the font skis. That's as big as that goes skis. 
Commonwealth Bank will be the first major Aussie bank to offer customers the ability to buy, sell, and hodl crypto. <laughs> I didn't even, I just said, it says hold, but I said hodl. Uh, to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrency directly through its app with the move reimagining banking, it says. This is big, right? This is big for mass adoption. First Finland, now Australia is fake. What the? I know, a Finland, Finland. I mean, that means Santa Claus? Old mate, red beard, uh, red suit, white beard. He, he's that's fake. Shit. I mean, I can I can live in a world without Australia, but a world without Santa Claus, that's a world that I want to exist in. Uh, this will provide 6.5 million customers with access to 10 selected cryptocurrency coins, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. Fire a new feature inside the app. So hold on a second. This is custodial, right? They hold your keys then. Interesting. So you're not you're not dealing with a wallet, you're dealing with the bank's app. So essentially the bank is becoming an exchange. Right? Am I getting am I getting that or am I getting it wrong? You don't so you'll go into I don't bank with Commonwealth Bank. I used to, or I have done, but I don't anymore. Um, so you'll go into your app and there'll be a finance section that'll include cryptocurrency and you'll be able to just go and buy cryptocurrency, but you won't get a MetaMask wallet or a Bitcoin wallet. You'll just get a tap. Uh. What the hell was that noise? I don't know, but that noise is a follow. Never a dull moment with the follow. Yo, Neverskis, thanks for following the Gives a Minute D live stream. Now, this makes you the latest giver right here on the channel. Now, why would this make you a giver? Well, let me explain. You see, you're giving me your time to consume the content. Me, I'm a giver because I'm giving you my time to create the content. And so you see how we're both givers here. And this is a two way street. But you're the latest giver on the Gives a Minute. D live stream skis. Thanks for the follow. Redox Bear, this is why Litecoin is very undervalued. Anytime Bitcoin gets adoption, Litecoin is there with it. I mean, this is true. This is true. This is true. What's with the, the never a dull moment? Thumbs down. You th Thumbs up. Thank you. We, we, I'll take either a thumb, dude. One down, one up. Doesn't bother me. Um, so I'm trying to put my head around this. If I get it, if I understand this correctly, if you trade cryptocurrency, but you don't have access to a wallet, in, a, in effect, wherever you're trading that cryptocurrency, they're holding your keys, right? You're, you're not actually holding Bitcoin. You're seeing a number on a screen, but you're not actually having access to... I mean, you'd, ha you'd obviously be able to go from the crypto to fiat currency right i just i just haven't i haven't considered this yet myself i haven't kind of put this like worked this out but it's kind of like it's like an etf right but the 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 bank that you bank with is dealing with the back end because i can't imagine that commonwealth bank would say you want to start dealing in crypto no worries click here and then it says oh download this Chrome extension, or if you're on the phone, download this app. It's called MetaMask. People will be like, "What? What am I going to do that for? I just want to get the crypto." It would all it would all be inside the Commonwealth Bank app, and you wouldn't have to install anything. So therefore, it's not quite your crypto, right? I mean, it, it's good for adoption. It's good for every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and every Larry Long John up the street be like, "Yeah, I got crypto. Look, I got it here." I got it. I've had it. I've had crypto. I've had crypto. I've had my Bitcoin since I got I got the letter from Commonwealth Bank saying they're crypto now, and I got some. I'm a, I'm a hodler. Yes and no. Good, good, and good for everybody, but not quite there. But a good thing. A good thing. Never a dull moment. Says right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I agree. I mean, that, that's what I think. I gotta get some more water here. Let's keep reading though. Uh, a pilot of the crypto exchange. I told you they're they're acting like an exchange at that point. They're not. A, they're not. You're not using the bank's app as a wallet. They're acting as an exchange on your behalf. 
A pilot of the crypto exchange will be available in the coming weeks, while the bank plans to roll out more features to customers from next year. Oh, hello, a little ad playing on the side. Oh, I'll close, oh, I'll just leave that there. Uh, the new features have been designed with the help of the world's largest regulated crypto exchange, Gemini. I told you, I haven't read this article. I'm reading it for the first time with you, Yahoo's. Uh, research from the Commonwealth Bank has found a large number of its customers want to access crypto assets as an investment and are already buying, selling and hodling crypto assets through a variety of exchanges. Ah, ah, I take umbrage with that. I don't believe that to be, to be frank. I don't believe this paragraph. They say that their research is saying that a large number of their customers want to access crypto as an investment and they're already doing that. They're already buying, selling and hodling crypto through a variety of exchange. I don't believe that. If they're already doing it, they're already doing it. You offering it as an in-app experience from Commonwealth Bank isn't helping them do it. It's another way for no one it's another way for someone who's not doing it to easily get a leg in to do it. But if they're already doing it, they would know that it's not your key, not your keys, not your crypto, right? They, if Yes, I don't believe that. Don't believe everything you read, folks. Also, don't believe that's actually a Bitcoin. I don't believe that anyone actually has any of those. Aussie customers want to buy crypto in an easy way because it's so difficult right now. It's really, really hard to buy crypto, folks. I know you want to get involved. It's a real difficult thing to do. I can't believe it. Download the Commonwealth Bank app and it'll all be easy for you. Anyway, uh, CEO Matt Common. Are you serious? The CEO of Commonwealth Bank has come in his name? Are you for real? That's his name? Com Comian? He's the CEO of Commonwealth Bank, and his name is Matt Comyon. I mean, you can't make this up, right? That's, that's too much of a coincidence. What's his middle name, Bank? CEO Matt Bank Comyon said the growing demand for digital currencies from customers creates both challenges and opportunities for the financial sector services sector. They're running scared. That's the problem, right? They're, they're so far behind. This is already... This has moved on from, from the financial sector. It's far and it's already on its own, right? It's already out there. It's already doing its thing. It has been for a long time and they're all behind, uh, which has seen a significant number of new players and business models innovating in the area. I don't know if that's innovating. The innovation already occurred when, uh, when Bitcoin was introduced. This is like six, oh, 15 years later catching up and that's innovating. It's pretty slow to innovate. We believe we can play an important role in crypto to address what's clearly a growing customer need and provide capability, security, and confidence in a crypto trading platform. Bingo, bango. Uh, well, okay. First of all, let's break that down. Yes, it is a growing customer need only because you're talking about it on mainstream news these days. Commonwealth Bank and other such banks. We want to provide the capability and the security and confidence because everybody knows it's a big wide world web out there. And if you start trading crypto, you could be hacked. You could be hacked, folks. You could lose it all. You could forget your seed phrase. It could all go up in a big ball of flames. <laughs> I'm joking about this, but it, I mean, I'm in it. In many ways, this is a giggle, but in many other ways, this is good for a lot of people. You know, Larry Long John up the street, who's 80 years of age, may want to get into crypto. They're not going to go any other way except this way, right? This is their this is their way in. Uh, in looking at ways that we can support our customers, we have made the strategic decision to form an exclusive partnership in Australia with Gemini, a global leader with strong security and a track record of serving large institutions. Commonwealth Bank Australia, CBA, will leverage Gemini's crypto exchange and custody service and integrate it into the Commonwealth Bank app. Well, there it is, folks. That's exactly how it's gonna work. So the Gemini 
uh, exchange will hold your coins and your keys and the Commonwealth Bank will be a not just a third party but a fourth party in that transaction of which you will pay for as well let's not forget that right Gemini will take a cut and Commonwealth Bank will also take a cut what do you get out of that you will get the confidence and security of crypto trading on a crypto trading platform just be aware that you're paying for it and this is the guy who will profit mr com himself the bank has also partnered with chainalysis a global leader in blockchain data and analytics 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 even i always struggle with that word because it's got the word anal in it it throws me off to help compliance teams monitor and mitigate the threat of crime through crypto asset exchanges. The threat of crime. Oh, gotta gotta disagree with that one. But before I do, T Baker66 with a follow. Yo, T Baker. Thanks for following the Gives a Minute D live stream. Now this makes you the latest giver right here on the channel. Huh? You wanna know why this makes you a giver? Well, let me explain. You see, you're giving me your time to consume the content, whereas me, I'm a giver because I'm giving you my time to create the content. And so you see how we're both givers here, and this is a two-way street. But you're the latest giver on the Gives a Minute D live stream. So thanks for the follow, T Baker. Now, this here, the threat of crime through crypto asset exchanges, there's always a threat of crime, right? It's always the big scary criminal. That's even worse if you don't hold your own, if you don't hold your keys, the threat of crime is even more compelling. Financial institutions like the Commonwealth Bank play an integral role in growing cryptocurrency adoption safely. I'd agree with that. I, you don't need to put the word safely in there. I would just end that sentence on adoption. Said Michael Groninger. Groninger. CEO and co-founder of Chainalysis. Uh, Mr. Com added that customers have expressed concern regarding some of the crypto services in the market today including the friction of using third-party exchanges, the risk of fraud, and the lack of trust in new provider or in some new providers. Hold on a second. An exchange isn't a third party. The exchange operates between the seller, the buyer, in, sorry, the exchange operates in between the seller and the buyer if anything, Commonwealth Bank is a fourth party in this transaction. And that increases this, the risk of fraud. So instead of putting your faith in one exchange, like if you, so, so hey, so look, if you're gonna go to buy Bitcoin, right? If, you, if, you're gonna go and, if you're gonna go and buy Bitcoin right now, you go to an exchange, you use the exchange. You, well, first of all, you convert, you probably go to Binance, right? Main, mainly in Australia, you've got to Binance. You'll convert some of your, Aussie dollars from your account, from your bank account, just dump it into your Binance account and you'll convert it to Bitcoin using the exchange. At that point, you've only you've only used a transaction onto the exchange. When you when it comes time to cash that out, when the value goes up and you want to take it, you then convert it back to your local currency, in this case AUD, and you withdraw it. That's not that difficult, right? I mean the KYC might be a little bit first time but once you've proved who you are with identity it's pretty much straightforward so you add so you add so in this case the ex exchange would be gemini that's what commonwealth bank are gonna partner with then underneath that comes commonwealth bank so you've got commonwealth bank that are acting on your behalf to go to gemini so you're adding another layer here and that layer the th the, the third layer right that's where if you're gonna have any risk any additional risk, it's going to come there. So I'll take umbrage with what they've just said there. But she's cute. I got distracted by a cute woman. Uh, we remain committed to reimagining banking and will continue to bring more functionality into the ComBank app, including investing and shopping. So shopping's part of it now too? Okay. 
The move is part of is part of a bid to appeal to younger customers and keep pace with rivals such as Square and PayPal, which already allows users to trade and spend Bitcoin right on. All of this mass adoption. She's smirking because she knows they're they're late here, but oh, we're finally there. We are, we're finally there. What's her name? Caroline Bowler. Bala? Bala. Caroline, uh, Bitcoin market CEO Caroline Bowler, oh, she's not She's not from Commonwealth Bank, said it was a red letter day for crypto. <laughs> Picture supplied, stock image. Uh, Caroline Bowler, CEO of Australian owned crypto exchange Bitcoin market. I'd never even heard of it. That's an exchange, Bitcoin market, BTC market. Said Commonwealth Bank's move was an exciting but inevitable. Exciting but inevitable. So that doesn't give you much. That's not singing much praise for it, is it? It's an exciting but it's inevitable. Yet another red letter day for crypto, and it is though Australia has suddenly put the lead foot down. We've been touted as playing catch up all the while, but now we're moving to a leadership position globally with our largest bank and one of the most significant mainstream financial institutions in the world offering millions of customers access to cryptocurrencies. So what does this do for Bitcoin price? Price go up. With regulation in the offering and the largest bank in the country allowing it, the floodgates are now open for more appetite from traditional finance and smart money to move into cryptocurrencies. Ooh, it's all a bit frightening, isn't it? It's all a bit scary. Mainstream mass adoption, hell yeah, yeah. This is good. This is a good thing very good thing for everybody concerned especially if you've already been holding bitcoin you're off you're off to the races now folks what we're going to do we are going to take a pause here smart money is already in crypto right on red x red ox bear i couldn't have said that any better i was I, there's so much in those in these kind of like mainstream articles that are just like it's laughable right it's la it's 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 a giggle for everybody like for me you and everybody here on the streams but it's a good thing I understand that it's a good thing, but it also is a little bit of a giggle. It's like they're they're catching up. They're well behind the eight ball and they're doing the best to catch up. And they're going to give some people an easy option in. But this idea that they've been flagged by a lot of their customers who already trade cryptocurrencies to be able to do it on their platform. Get out of here. Nobody said that. They're all like, nah, dude, we're, we're quite happy with our MetaMask wallets. We're, we're quite stoked here. We don't need any. What? What? And what, we got to pay you to do that? No. Get out of here. C come on. What, inflation rates aren't giving you enough coin from us? you got to take off our crypto investments as well now? Get out of here. They didn't say that. Nobody said that. We're going to come back. Uh, I'm going to go and fill up my uh, water here. But we're going to come back and we're going to look at the Umbrella Network. Now, the Umbrella Network is an oracle. I don't know much about oracles. Aside from the Matrix, I'm not even sure really what an oracle is. But well, we're going to learn about that in a moment. To get us to that, though, I am going to run my surfing clip because this is a YouTube stream. And if I play any music, they'll come down like a ton of bricks. So let's just run a surfing clip from a while ago, the end of my Wave a Day project. When we come back, I'll have a fresh glass of water and we'll move into Umbrella Network. Ooh, welcome back to the super quick Wave a Day edit. <laughs> Hello. Last day of the project. Last day of a Wave a Day Spring Edition 2021. Happened right here at Colborough Beach. Halloween it is. Happy 31st of October. And um, well, you know, conditions were reasonably good. I, I found it a little difficult, not gonna lie. It was pretty sucky and big at the start. And then, I don't know. I just don't think I surfed that well. And I'm trying to I don't want to put a dampener on the end of the, the project, but um, boy, that really sucked out there. How about that surfing? You suck, man. I didn't do too very well. I mean, I got a few, I got a few. I just don't feel like, like I wanted to go out with an absolute banger and I went out with a mild fizz. But you know me, I don't want to be the judge of that. How about um, you decide?
good morning Sunday and welcome to the last day of the project 31 days of surfboard riding learning to surf today it looks close out ish close out city population me It's going to be right here. So that's the second wave. I went right, close out, bugger. What do you know? What do you think? What do you do? Was that as bad as I made out? It wasn't great, was it? I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I could have done better. I could have done better. I will do better next time. It won't be tomorrow though, because that's the end of the project. The wave a day finished. 31 days of surfing every single day for the month of October for one hour at a time. GoPro battery from start to finish. Paddle, 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 paddle. Surfboard ride, surfboard ride, surfboard ride. Fun, 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 fun. Edit, 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 edit. Share, 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 share. 31 days worth. Now we're done. While I sit down and think about all of those things, you guys can go back to the live stream. <laughs> Oh, you guys are already back? Sorry. Uh, I had to take my umbrella with me uh, out of my fitness walk because it was raining today and I was just trying to close it all up there. But uh, what were we, we going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Umbrella network. What a segue! Smooth! Umbrella network, folks. Securely bringing the world's data on chain. Let's make that font a little larger if we can. Umbrella is the first truly decentralized Oracle service providing low cost, massively scalable and secure solutions for smart contracts. Redox Bear gets it. I, I genuinely did have to take that with me today though. That was why I had that sitting next to me. Um, oh, they're gonna give me some cookies. I love a cookie. Um, why use Umbrella Network? We provide access to data previously unavailable to blockchain developers at a far lower cost than any other Oracle in the industry. So 
if I understand correctly, an oracle provides the blockchain to developers. Is that right? And with over one and a half, with over 1,200 data pairs avail available, we offer more data than any other oracle in the ecosystem. Core pairs, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and DAI. Core asset prices are updated frequently. Mid and long tail pairs. There's examples, comprehensive data on both mid and small cap cryptocurrencies. Uh, real world financial data, extensive set of financial data ranging from indexes and equities, commodities, and more. Options and TWAPs. Implied, realized, direct API, call any API. Okay, okay. Over 100, I just said that already. From the polka dot to the British pound to the price of Bent crude. Brent crude. We support over 1,200 data pairs to developers around the world. So this is uh, this is kind of like an ETF, right? They're, they're not just crypto. It's like everything together. Umbrella can provide way more data at fair cheaper and is leading company, leading competitor Chainlink. Yeah, okay. Scalability and cost effectiveness. Umbrella's decentralized nodes are built using layer two Merkle trees, a solution for bundling thousands of data pairs into a single transaction. This tech significantly reduces costs while increasing the scalability. Security. Umbrella collects data feeds from multiple sources to calculate the most accurate price in the market. It utilizes delegated proof of stake consensus model to ensure the security of the data transport protocol. Hey, Mac. Hey, doing, man? Oh, crikey, that's full. Because I filled it up. Hey, doing, man? Lurking with your Aussie flag. Thank you, dude. Community owned. The data infrastructure supporting decentralized finance is too critical to be controlled by a centralized party. Umbrella is a community owned project where stakers, developers, validators, and the foundation together govern how the network is operated. Okay. There you go. You can join the community. Yeah, Umbrella's future is in the hands of our community, where it should be. We have an active community spread across different channels. Join us to be a part of the conversate. Are you a member of the community, Redox Bear? Are you an Umbrella member? DeFi on its own will be a multi-trillion dollar industry in the coming years. Yeah, right. Interesting. Decentralized finance. Learn more about our network. We bring data. We bring big data to the world of blockchain. With our data solutions, you can connect your blockchain applications with all the data it needs in a secure and cost-effective way. They've got a newsletter there. But we always take uh, some uh, opinions here from those in the know. This is so they have an they have a coin, right? Obviously. So the UMB is their token, I guess. This is Crypto Never Sleeps channel. Undervalued low cap altcoin. Uh, yes, I've been dollar cost averaging and staking Umbrella since it launched in Feb. Oh, okay, interesting. So you can stake the shizzle. Let's have a look, folks. When I think about Umbrella, I think about everything else than a rainy day. Reason being is we are almost close to 600%. And Umbrella is still trading 70% below its all-time high, which was on February the 10th, 2021. Now, not only are we up close to 600%, we're also staking. And we are staking also closely to around 70%. You see, it's always about identifying those true coins that could potentially become the market leaders of tomorrow. Staking API was around 350%. Now it's about the 60. Dude, that's a that's a huge APY. Before we go any further, though, let's have a look at the uh, coin gecko. Ooh, that's interesting. Let's have a look at um, UMB. How's it trading? Umbrella network. 26 bucks a coin. Ooh, interesting. So it's a fairly expensive coin. Market uh, all time high 44 bucks about six months ago. I mean, I'd like to get in on this. Let's have a look at the 30 day chart. Okay. Okay. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good chart. Hey, up and down, pretty consistent, pretty consistent fluctuations. What about the uh, one year chart? What are we on Uniswap? What? Hang on that. 
Dude, that's the wrong coin. UMB. I thought I... Okay, so you actually have to click it. I, I just hit enter and it went to Uniswap. Okay, so that's better. <laughs> that's not UMB, it's Uniswap. Yeah, that's weird on, on CoinGecko. I, you can normally just, I mean, on CoinMarketCap, you just hit enter and it goes to the top one. But here we go, folks. 63 cents. 63 cents, the all-time high, $2.62. That was nine months ago. And it's, ooh, okay, 24 hour charts down. What about 14 day? Okay, let's go back to 90 day. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. Let's go and look at their max chart. How long has it been around for? So, initial drop off, but then a relatively long period of nada, and then some upward trend here. Interesting. Interesting. Let's continue learning about it. I'm uh, I'm intrigued. Uh, Redox Bear, can you get it? Can you get UMB uh, in faucets anywhere and start staking that way, or do you have to pay for it? I mean, I guess I could. Let me learn about it first. <laughs> I have a little bit of FOMO right there, I'm not going to lie, a little bit of FOMO right then. I was like, how can I get some? I haven't even learned about it yet, but because, dude, you know what you've done, man? Because you've got some, I just wanted some, hey. I'm not kidding. Because you said I've been dollar cost averaging and staking Umbrella since it launched in February, I was like, I want to do that too. I don't even know what it is yet. I just, <laughs> don't ever do this, right? Don't ever do that. Just learn about something before you want to get in on it i stake on the ethereum stream pay high gas fee uh is it a, is it erc20 is it bugger yeah i'm not too keen on that to be completely frank i got a hex stake coming out in two weeks i guess i shouldn't be spending anything because i'm gonna have to pay some miner up the freaking wazoo for that crap anyway today we're gonna talk about umbrella network and what makes it so unique but before we start, I want to welcome you to Crypto Never Sleeps. So in case you're new to this channel and you want to stay on top of the crypto world, well then please hit like, smash, subscribe. Crypto Never Sleeps. That's a strange name for a channel because uh, if you don't get your sleep, you're going to make the wrong decisions in life. Uh, no, UMB is on Ethereum, uh, BSC and Polygon. Oh, so you can do it on all three. I'd probably go on, on Binance Smart Chain then. But can you stake it on the Binance Smart? Oh, I guess we'll learn so that you can be notified whenever we upload new videos. My name is Nico Arachi and I'm the host of this little show. The Umbrella Network launched one of the largest initial DEX offerings, also referred to as IDOs, in the beginning of 2021. The Umbrella Network is quite unique. It is one of the first to empower the development of decentralized financial applications based on real-world data. Basically, remember, in order to achieve mass adoption, we need to see the transition going from traditional to digital. So by utilizing blockchain technology to create a new future for DeFi, the Umbrella Network are bringing personal and enterprise finance to the 21st century. The decentralization power of the Umbrella Network is centered around the UMB utility token, which is used for staking, community votes and rewards as well as incentives. By introducing a layer 2 blockchain integration, Umbrella Network creates a highly scalable Oracle solution. The live Umbrella price today is trading at around 76 cents per token. The current coin market cap ranking is at number 563 with a market cap of 56.3 million. It is on more than 22,000 different watch, watch lists. And as I said, it is currently trading 70.28% below its all-time high, which was on February the 10th, 2021. And we also have some news regarding Umbrella Network. In fact, the Ethereum mainnet launch is the second major blockchain where Umbrella is now live. And the leading competitor is Link at 16 billion market cap, rank 15. Interesting. Um, I had a question as he was talking. I thought of it, and now I cannot recall. No, I can't recall. I had something that I wanted to ask. 
after it originally launched on the Binance Smart Chain mainnet in May. So Umbrella's network's mainnet launched on Ethereum means that they deployed the smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain so that Ethereum-based dApps can communicate with Umbrella network code in the live environment, requesting and getting data that is reliable, comprehensive, and most of all, cost-effective. Furthermore, Umbrella also announced the launch of their in-house developed ETH BSC token bridge. This shall enable seamless transfers of the um, tokens across the Ethereum and Binance smart chain blockchains. Now Umbrella, the network, as a decentralized layer 2 blockchain agnostic oracle will have their token, aka ticker UMB, so that token holders across multiple blockchains such as Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, as we already mentioned, but furthermore also Solana, Polkadot, AVAX, and Cardano, and obviously Polygon, just to name a few. And then when you talk about those few, from my point of view, they are the main few, the only few. The second piece of news is that Umbrella has recently acquired Lucidit, which is a blockchain-based advertising and analytic platform. In the initial phases following this acquisition, Lucidity clients, users, customers will be powered by Umbrella Network, making it the largest scale oracle in the ecosystem. In digital advertising, over $30 billion are wasted every year, and advertisers are demanding transparency and efficiency. Built on the Ethereum blockchain, Lucidity resolves data discrepancies, so reconciling billing is faster, fraud and waste are eliminated, and enables transparent supply chain evaluation, so advertisers know exactly where their budgets are going. Now here's a big one when it comes to the client list. Lucidity's clients, which include... Sachi Sachi? Dude, that must be where I got that from. Whenever Poopsie's here and she has a new baby, a little toy or something, I always ask her what the name is. She always tells me, and I always say, Sachi, Sachi, Sachi? That must be where I got it from. So there's actually a company called Sachi and Sachi. Must have been in, must have been in the subconscious of mine. Sachi, Sachi. KFC, not KYC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, my friend. Hyundai, Genesis, and advertising agencies Sachi and Sachi, Sachi will receive an augmented suite of technology tools, including untapped on-chain data that will improve the digital media buying experience by eliminating waste and optimizing their supply chain. So by using CDT, advertisers will save an average of 30% on ads buys per campaign. Now just listen to this. I mean, these are some big brands, some big names. So Umbrella was smart buying, <laughs> buying another company that has clients such as Saatchi and Saatchi and KFC and Hyundai, but Saatchi and Saatchi is the biggest advertising company I think in the world. Not bad at all. And now let's get to the third piece of news, which is also fantastic. Umbrella Network, they are continuing their forward march and they are excited to announce their latest partnership with Armor Finance, which is a leading DeFi insurance coverage aggregator that allows users to protect funds held on a variety of DeFi protocols with an easy self-adjusting pay-as-you-go process. Now, Armor Finance recently announced an innovative and a new product called Shield Waltz. Shield Vaults offers coverage-bearing tokens which automatically provide cheaper coverage without ever needing any maintenance or renewals. However, the complex and demanding data requirements for these products were difficult for other oracles to handle effectively. So via a partnership <coughs> with Umbrella Network, Arm Finance will be able to fulfill their data needs comprehensive, low-cost, secure, and up-to-date. And you know what? Last but not least, we also got news only two days old. Umbrella Network is now live on Polygon Mainnet and is able to integrate native support for the family of dApps, decentralized applications built on Polygon. This is going to enable the plethora of... That didn't uh, 
kind of hasn't answered my question. I was thinking, Radox Bear, you said you you staked on the Ethereum stream, paid high gas fees back in March. Are you still staking on Ethereum, or have you swapped over to Polygon or to um, Binance Smart Chain? Game, GameFi, Debs and FinTech Debs, mushrooming in the Polygon ecosystem to leverage Umbrella's network's data feeds natively into their smart contracts. I don't think I need to give you my two cents on the dollar. Umbrella was a very good buy. You can get a 95% discount. Well, all I can say is I'm in. And Umbrella is just one of those coins. It's going to be, remain, establish themselves as a market leader of today, tomorrow. My name is Nico Arachi, and I hope this gave you any kind of value. If not, Kitty, she still loves you. <laughs> uh, I'm still staking on the Ethereum stream. The thing is, you have to pay gas fees when you put in and take it out. Yeah, yeah, interesting. That's a that's a big no no for me. Uh, that's a that's a big turn off. Uh, the gas fees on Ethereum. I I never want to transact on the Ethereum chain ever. I've I I will have to in the next two weeks, but I'm really not looking forward to it. Uh, let's take another video here. This is from a channel called The Real Crypto Space Umbrella Network, uh, low cap gem, first DeFi oracle for the Binance Smart Chain Network. This went up on the 28th of October. Welcome back to The Real Crypto Space. I'm your co-host Louis and today's video is on the Umbrella Network. Welcome back to The Real Crypto Space. And as Louis said, we will be talking about the cryptocurrency called Umbrella Network. So. Please make sure you do your own research as this is not financial advice and um, we hope you enjoy this video. So as you can see recently we've been doing lots of small cap coins that we think that is the biggest potential and we think our audience are the people that are investing in uh, more small cap coins rather than uh, Bitcoin because that's what we've been talking about the whole time. We've just been talking about altcoins on this channel pretty much apart from on a bear market. So there are staking options on Binance Smart Chain as well. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Do you know of any faucets to, to, to drip feed some UMB? That's, 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 that was the question I couldn't think of before. Do you know of any faucets that drip that drip feed your UMB? So when a super bull run occurs. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's 47 cents and the market cap is only $35 million, which is actually kind of insane with the price there. Uh, but if you look at uh, circulating supply, we still have 85% of the coins to be released into circulation, which means to be bought up. Um, so as they do get released uh, to be bought up, uh, until they're bought up, the price will not be going up. The price more time goes down as uh, we are waiting for them to be bought up. Um, but that does not take um, too long, and that is only a short period of time uh, where it's going down. Uh, but yeah, let's look at its all-time high. So as you can see, its all-time high was actually $2.58. So that is a 5x right there if it went back to its all-time high. But how much money needs to flow into the market cap and flow into this coin to make this market cap uh, to allow the price to be at its all time high, which is which was two dollars and fifty eight cents. So if we look at this market cap when it was that price, it was So you need about another one hundred and fifty million dollars or so about one hundred and thirty million, one hundred and fifty million dollars flow into the market for it to reach its all time high once again. Um, which is definitely possible, especially with uh, the current market, global market cap of crypto, which is $2.6 trillion. Uh, obviously, majority, I think, uh, was it 60% is in Bitcoin? Um, but that leaves us with over a trillion dollars for altcoins and Ethereum and everything else. Um, and this is currently ranked 663. So we have a way to go with this coin for sure. It, it can be top 50 for sure. Uh, but let's get straight into the video. As you can turn out on their website, they have said that it's you're securely bringing the world's data on chain. And Umbrella is a first tree decentralized Oracle service providing low cost, massively scalable and secure solutions for smart contracts. So as you can see, people ask, why would you want to use Umbrella Network? So as you can see, they provide access to data previously unavailable to blockchain developers and at a far lower cost than um, any other Oracle in, in the industry. And with over 1200 data pairs available, they offer more data than any other Oracle. So it has different coin pairs, which are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and DAI. Core asset prices are updated frequently and at significantly lower cost. 
mid and long uh, tail pair, so MATIC, AMPL, and HEGIC, which are comprehensive data on both mid and small cap currencies. Real world financial data, so NASDAQ, gold, oil, so foreign exchange, uh, extensive set of financial data ranging from indexes to equities, commodities, and more. Options and TWAPs, which are uh, implied uh, volume, realized volume, and TWAP. So uh, critical volatility data and the Greeks for options and derivatives, time and volume, weighted average and prices, um, and then di direct API, so you can call any API. Umbrellas Network direct API allows blockchain developers to call any API and pull data on the web with the help of smart contracts. You deliver 1200 data pairs from the Polkadot to the British pound to um, the price of Brent crude. So there's a lot of stuff and they do, they do support 1200 data pairs and um, to the developers around the world as they develop high level of blockchain projects and you can see they are scalable and cost effective and they also offer a high level of security as well so the state bit so as you can see at the top here you can also stake your umbrella network so you can stake it here and in your wallet it will be viewed as RUMB so if you want to stake that you can stake the umbrella and uh, the derivative of it will be RUMB that's another thing that you could possibly do to make passive income so as you can see here the RUMB token are redeemable on a one-to-one -one basis with the UMB. So it's the exact cryptocurrency, just an extra letter basically. It shows you your stated version. And um, after a period of one year from the program launch, 15th of February 2021, um, or after milestone one is achieved, whichever is sooner, milestone one is will be uh, based on data volume with exact details being announced after mainnet launch, which is not yet at this minute. So as you can see, these are all the companies that are backed by. So Polygon, which is the previous uh, Matic network, so a huge company. Elrond, a huge company. Huob, a huge company. All these big companies, uh, Kairos Ventures, big one. Moonwell, big one. Uh, UB uh, Capital, big one. These are all huge, huge companies. So the fact they're backed by these companies, I won't be too hesitant to be investing in this coin. Uh, but obviously you need to do your own due diligence on this so you need to look at the ceos on linkedin you need to look at what they've done in the past you need to look into them all and you need to see is, is it uh, an open ceo can you see him and all this so that is now pretty much the end of the video uh, if you have enjoyed please make sure you press that like button and also press that red subscribe button it really helps not, us out we are almost at 400 subscribers not a great you... deal of info in that but we did look at it uh, already ourselves so i guess if we hadn't have looked at the website that would have been a great one to look at but this is the third. We always take three videos on a subject. This is the third video from the Crypto Visor, Crypto Umbrella. So this is, I guess, October, October 7th. So this is kind of quite recent as well. Welcome back to another episode of your favorite show right here on YouTube, The Crypto Visor, where we talk about everything crypto, blockchain, investing. Today we are... Wow, what an unfortunate mic placement. It's right in front of him. Looks like he's got a massive goatee, hey? <laughs> Just turn it up a little bit. Talking about Ethereum and Binance umbrella cross-chain compatibility. Then Texas leading the world in crypto and the... I mean, they may be the crypto capital of the world. And then we're going to talk about Venezuela removing inflation and also El Salvador. Don't forget to give this video a free thumbs up. It's up to date news every single day on this channel. So give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. A free thumbs up. On is there a paid thumbs up as well? I don't think there is. That way you never miss a new video. Only 60% of you are actually subscribed. That hurts my heart, guys. The other 40%. <laughs> Do me a favor and hit subscribe. Anyway, Umbrella Network launches on Ethereum with a cross-chain bridge to Binance Smart Chain. Decentralized Oracle Service Umbrella Network officially launched on Ethereum, setting the stage for cross-chain transactions between the dominant smart contract platform and Binance Smart Chain. The cross-chain bridge connecting Ethereum and BSC was developed in-house at the Umbrella Network, underscoring the need to transfer tokens or other crypto assets between two networks. The cross-chain bridge also enables users to stake and farm crypto to tokens on either blockchain. Umbrella said it's planning future cross-chain integrations with Polygon, Solana, Cardano, and Avalanche, though no timetable was given. This goes right in line with what I have been predicting for quite a few years on this channel. 
that we are moving towards an interoperability uh, ecosystem where all of these cryptocurrencies and blockchains are going to be able to move data, value, information from one chain to another, to another, and then back. And we're already starting to see these bridges started to be built. Although the blockchain industry has uh, given birth to several oracles, Umbrella claims that its protocol provides quick and affordable price feeds when compared with the leading competitors. Initially, the protocol will have over 1,200 data pairs on Ethereum, allowing users to integrate data from spot crypto, crypto derivative, and traditional markets. Oracles are considered to be an essential component of the smart contract because they provide reliable data feeds from external sources, as we already know. And this is part of the way that they are able to gather data from other chains and bring it over to theirs. It seems like Ethereum is the main, like, at the center of all of this interoperability between these different chains because they're all trying to plug into Ethereum. That, to me, says that Ethereum is the, the dominant network, right? And that's why everybody wants to plug into there because they want to be able to extract some of that value and bring it over to their chain. So we will see. It's really battle of the smart contract platforms at this point. We will see which leads. I think it's between Ethereum, Binance, and Cardano. Polygon does have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of partners and they're gaining a lot of traction. Solana, ugh, you guys watch some of my videos about Solana if you don't want to, if you don't know what my view on it is. I think it's just a venture capital coin that's uh, just being overhyped. And I think that we're going to see a drain in value. Hey, Charles soon. in the house. What's up, Gibbs and Givers? How you doing, Charles? Good to see you, man. Hello. Hello. Avalanche as well. These two are fairly new, not very time tested. So we will see what happens with them. I'll keep you guys up to date. So hit subscribe. Next up, Texas is poised okay. to be the- Well, we won't continue watching this gentleman's video. He's going to jump out of that. But that's that's the um, the information he has about the Umbrella Network. I'm going to have a look at that staking link that you did send uh, in the chat. Who did wow. that? Mayunas. Wow. Thanks, Charles. Cheers, man. Appreciate you, dude. So there's a link here to the staking uh, on the Umbrella Network that Red Ox Pair put in. Let's have a look, little look at that, see what that's all about. Uh, rewards simplified. Welcome to Umbrella Network Staking Portal. Here you can earn rewards by staking UMB or UMB LP tokens. Liquidity provided, I guess, for Umbrella Rewards. So you earn the RUMB, Rumble, or join a third-party rewards program with our partners, <coughs> for UMB and other reward tokens. Our UMB tokens are redeemable for UMB tokens on a one-to-one -to -one basis after a period of one year from the program launch. So we're about half, well, more than halfway, it's November. Why are we only hearing about this now if this has been around since February? Red Ox Bear, next time tell me when these things happen, dude. <laughs> Or after milestone one is achieved, whichever is sooner. Milestone one will be based on data volume with exact details being announced after the mainnet launch. Okay. Umbrella streams are umbrella smart contracts that reward users with RUMB for staking their UMB or liquidity pool tokens. Interesting. Connect your wallet here, I guess. Yep, true. Back in February, UMB was two bucks. Way better buy opportunity now. Uh, it's true. This is true. So these are all the programs. Yeah, okay. Um. Oh, that just jumps you down the page. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Steak for rumb. Interesting. So as it stands, I don't have the disp disposable uh, income right now to make a jump in. I'm interested though, I'm not going to deny that, I'm interested. Um, what I'm doing though, and it hasn't changed even though the price of HEX has changed quite dramatically, uh, I'm still performing these tasks if you like. All of this is aligning myself for the end of November. Once at that point, I will have all of my altcoins ready to purchase HEX or have already purchased HEX, 
with those altcoins. These are coins from different sites, Gaze TV. Oh, you know what we should do? We should go and have a look at Cos TV and see how that vest conversion to Cos is happening, is, is how that's progressing. Well, what are we now? The 10th of November. So I have a stake coming out. Actually, we can probably have a look at that. Let's let's um let's get ready to rumble. Now let's go over and have a look at how we're gonna do this. We're gonna go to let's go to Cos TV first. Let's have a look at the vest voz. Let's go look at Cos TV. We'll have a look at my vest and see how that's going. I'm converting vest to I'll explain it when we get there, but it's a little cumbersome, but so this is the Cos TV website. This is me signed in. So I got notifications up here, which I probably should scope out. So this is what I've earned for a particular comment. Someone liked my video. I earned that amount of dollars. Nothing really. Uh, some comments there. But what we really want to have a look at is my personal center here. It's a little clunky sometimes. Go down and hold it. So I go down to my personal center and I'll make this larger. So what we're seeing here is two things. And this is a little confusing. That's way too big. This is a little confusing for me, but and for you it should be too. So we've got this section here, which is called My Wallet. And then on the right-hand side here, we've got Cos TV Accounts. Now you'll see a Cos value here. 294 cos and a little bit of eth as well this is what i've earned on the site however this cos amount here is a lot higher 8347 to the tune of 282 us dollars this is so to explain it in a nutshell you earn this currency vest v-e-s-t you earn this by interacting on the site by uploading content by commenting by liking by replying to comments and just engagement on the website, that's what you earn. You earn VEST. Now, the higher your VEST amount, the more you earn. So it's like a ranking system. If you, if, you And I'm getting rid of mine, so I'm, my ranking is going to go right down because I want to invest it in HEX. But if you hold your VEST as VEST, you earn more VEST every time you comment, and then you become a valuable Contendos player, right? But there is a process here where you click more, where you can convert the vest, because vest is only usable on site, cos is tradable on Binance. So you want to convert whatever vest you have. At some point, you'll want to convert it to cos and then take it off site. And that's what I'm doing. There is a six week wait for that to happen. A six, it, it actually drip feeds it out every one sixth every week. So if we have a look, where's my mouse? If we have a look here, I've got this amount of vest that's actually being converted to COS up here. If I go and click convert to COS, it'll tell me you currently have a vest conversion in process. This transaction will interrupt the pro and, and So we don't want to do that. We want to let this play out. So it says here, after the conversion is initiated, one sixth of vest will be turned to COS every week and only one conversion can happen in one operation. And you've got to maintain 0.1 vest to uh, have the account. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to go back and I'm going to just, gee, that's better, isn't it? Large like that. Actually, that's too big. I'm going to leave this as it is because that's happening. But my confusion is, my confusion is, Here, let's go back to the personal center. My confusion lies in this cos amount here. At some point, that's oh, too big. At some point, I'm gonna need to dump this cos onto this cos tally. And I guess the way to do that is by hitting more. But the confusion here is you you have options to transfer or withdraw. It's a little bit off. Why is that off the? It's probably because I've zoomed it in. Yeah, yeah. So you have the option to transfer or to withdraw. So would I be better off transferring this 
Recipients UID. I don't know what a UID is. Let's let's view the tutorial here. User ID. I guess it's my user ID on Cos TV. Con Cos to to the BEP to. Dear Cosa, since the announcement of joining Binance, Binance chain ecosystem, you might have a lot of questions that needs to be answered. Gee, this is nobody's proofread this. Below are some of the most frequently asked questions we have received from Cosas. What's the role of Binance chain in Contentos? How do I create a wallet to hold Cos in BEP2 format? How do I withdraw Cos from Contest Contentos website? What should I do with Cos in an ERC20 format? Get out of there. Before we take a look at how to create a BEP2 wallet, let's talk about why content Contentos wants to join the blah, 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 blah. Binance chain provides higher transaction speeds, lower transaction yeah, yeah, Before Contentos, okay, so we don't want to touch Ethereum, right? So native COS token will be created. Functions claimed in white papers, da, 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 solutions for COS tokens. How do I create a wallet to hold COS in a BEP2 format? Contentos recommends the trust wallet, which I already do have. I've already got that. So download the trust wallet, blah, 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 blah. Do all that crap. Create a new wallet. Yep, cool, cool, cool. Private, got that. Backup, very good. Da, 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 da. Wallet ready. Okay, so once your wallet is ready, you want to get the address. Tap receive to reveal your BNB wallet address. Now I could obviously do this in trust or I could do it in MetaMask, right? I'll probably just use MetaMask. Um, You'll be able to receive BNB and tokens in BEP2 to that address. That makes sense. Receive, yep, there you go. That's the receiving. How do I withdraw COS from the Contentos website? Starting from the 6th of 2020, you'll be able to withdraw COS in BEP2 format from our new website, which is what we're on. You'll need to pass KYC which you before you can withdraw COS. I think I've already done that. I hope I've already done that. Should check that out actually. After sign in, click my wallet. So you click on my wallet. At the wallet page, you can check the balance of your account. So this is where it gets confusing, right? Because here, go back here. site is pretty slow too damn it's slow super slow so the confusion lies in the two wallets let me just go back this way it's much easier to just go to personal center the, my confusion lies in these two wallets right so you've got all right that's super slow you've got the cos tv account and you've got my wallet. Two different things. This cause comes from interacting or rolling dice on the site. This cause comes from the vest, the vest converted to cause. So let me clarify what that's all about. Check the wallet address. So you want to assign a wallet address there. Type your BNB wallet address. Yeah, assign a label. Then you'll have a wallet address there. Cool, cool. Click my wallet again. Click withdraw. So then you're going to withdraw from there. Select your destination wallet and amount from the drop. Yep, yeah, cool. What should I do with COS in ERC20 format? We don't have any ERC20s. So that doesn't help. Like that doesn't help because I guess at this point, this COS here, do I have to move? Once this conversion process has happened, where's my mouse? This COS here, once this conversion process from VEST to COS has happened, do I have to send that cause from here into transfer, deposit, convert to vest, convert to chicken? 
transfer. I guess I'm gonna have to transfer this. Target account. Dude, that is sketchy as, right? No, in no instructions how to do that. But I do have a tab that I kept. How to transfer. Isn't that what we just looked at? How to transfer COS from COS TV account to Binance. It's... Wow, dude. Super confusing. Uh, either way, we're not ready to do this at this point anyway. As soon as that VEST conversion process has happened, that's when I've really... At that point, when that VEST is converted, I've really got to work out how this happens, right? Um, target account. It's asking for a memo, so that means it's on chain, right? If it's asking for a memo, that's what they talked about here. This is this is actually it. Go to the token swap page of Contentos and enter your Binance address. Swap Contentos. What's the token swap page? Use this utility to swap COS between different token formats, including mainnet native COS, BEP2, and ERC20. Token swap direction. Mainnet COS to BEP2. Guess that's what it's going to be, isn't it? Dude, super confusing, right? Super confusing. Let's go to the token swap page. Main net cause to BEP2. Yeah. It will show up the memo line automatically, depends on the address you fill in. Copy and paste the memo from Binance. This is super confusing, huh? So that's in Binance. Copy and paste the address and email from the token swap page to the transfer page of CosTV wallet. Fuck, another wallet. What the fuck, dude? Another wallet here? Transfer? Wallet transfer. Is that the same thing? That is the same thing, but that's you can see my values increase slightly. Okay. Okay, well, like I said, we're not doing this now. But I mean, at least it's at least it's there to see that it, it, it yeah. At least I'm seeing that it's there possible to do. But I need to I need to make sure that I've done my KYC on on um on Cos. How do I know if I've done that? I, bet, I guess I better check that off offline or out of stream, right? I don't know if I've done KYC because I'd I'd hate to get to that point where I'm ready to do that 
and all of a sudden there's a four week wait for them to verify the KYC crap. Um, Cause I haven't done anything. Uh, I probably haven't because I haven't transacted on that site aside from earning the stuff. So I probably should do that myself. Um, I will do that myself. We did have one last thing to look at here. Um, what was it? There was one other thing we we're going to look at. It was, oh, it was a tweet that someone wanted me to look at. A tweet. Sunday Swap Labs. After months of development, Sunday Swap Labs is thrilled to finally show off our concurrency solution and roadmap to launch. Read below about the scooper model and what brings to the table. And don't worry, we brought receipts. Sunday Swap. I don't know what Sunday Swap is. Uh, the scooper model. Nice graphic. Why can't I zoom that in? What? You can't zoom in a median? Seriously? <laughs> okay. Well, I can't zoom that in. Uh, much ink. Uh, Uniswap to Ethereum. Sunday swap to Cardano. Is that right? Okay. Okay, it, you can zoom in. It just took f f that long for it to actually do it. Well, that was weird, right? You saw that. I was like, how come I can't zoom the text in? You can. Just take 20 hours to do it. Uh, much ink has been spilled in recent weeks about scalability on Cardano. We wrote an article about the trade-offs IOG had made affecting scalability, and several projects have posted about their... What? I just want to highlight it about their architectural solutions to offset some of the trade-offs. Now, as Sunday Swap is approaching its public testnet and subsequent launch, we thought that now would be a good time to crack open the hood on our protocol architecture and journey we took to get there. We evaluated a number of solutions in depth, and some of these bear a resemblance to those being discussed elsewhere in the Cardano ecosystem. While each protocol has their own set of crit criteria and trade-offs, that they choose to prioritize, we concluded that many approaches had at least one serious flaw and ultimately caused us to reject them. How long is this article? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm not reading all that for you. Um, give us the gist of it. That's a big article, folks. Doesn't it tell you at the start how long the article is? 20 minute read, yeah, okay. so. So in a nutshell, if I'm reading uh, Redox Bear's comment correctly, Uniswap to Ethereum and Sunday Swap to Cardano. So if you want to do swaps onto those smart chains or onto those chains, you'll be able to use Sunday Swap at some point. It, it said it's public test net. So not even a public, not a main net, but a test net in the public. That is test net. Public, right? Test nets are always public. I, mean, I guess they could be a private test net. But um, that's the last story we had for the stream today. So we're going to take, uh, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap things up here. Unless Redox Bear, unless you got anything else you want us to address at this stage, should we take one last look at the uh, real time price of the Bitcoin machine ski? We might as well while we're here, hey. I want to see it just out of curiosity. See how we're going, uh, Coin Gecko. Uh, Bitcoin sixty six five seven four five seven four. Okay. Trading sideways for the last hour or so. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That's where we're going to wrap things up, folks. There are four Yahoo's watching the content. Thanks for being here with me. Redox, mainly Redox Bear Charles and Brewski Bear was up there for a little while. There are four Yahoo's still watching. Is that even worth hosting someone with four Yahoo's? Let's give a host. If anybody wants me to host someone, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just wrap it. But I'm happy to host. Um, 
I'm just going to ask Redox, Bear, and Charles, who should we host? If we don't have, a, have an answer, we won't host anybody. But I want to thank the financial contributions to the content here. I do this full time, so I appreciate you contributing to me. Now, when you look to your own chisel chat, you can clearly see the top contributors to this very stream. We've got Charles, Brewski Bear, and Redox Bear right there. Thank you for the contributions that you guys have made to the stream. Much appreciation. Redox Bear, who is that for a host? Something. What's that? Em I don't know who that emote belongs to, dude. I don't know who that emote belongs to. Redox Bear. Def Mike. Def Mike. Let's give Def Mike a host. Is he live? I don't see Def Mike on the sidebar. Do I not follow Def Mike? Come on, dude. Seriously? No, I follow Def Mike. Let me just do a little searchy search. How come I don't have him on the sidebar? That's weird. I've, I've followed. I'm, I've followed Def Mike. You, you see that? Oh, he's on the sidebar now. I don't know. Glitchity glitch, glitchity glitch, midgety ditch. There you go, folks. We're going to give Def Mike a host. Bam, bam, bam. That's going to give us a confirmation warning right there. Although right now my stream's going to come to a conclusion. Blah blah blah. Bling blong bling. Blah blue blue blue. And I'll see you Yahoo's tomorrow for fun times. Get him out of there.